When the Kona launched midway through 2017, Hyundai knew immediately it had a massive hit on its hands. It's as though all compact, even mid-sized sedan owners who were looking to buy an SUV said, you know what, maybe not an SUV, but maybe a crossover. And they just all headed simultaneously, or pretty much, to their nearest Hyundai dealers and picked up a Kona. And I get it, it was and is still a very interesting proposition in this segment. Then Hyundai made it a little bit more appealing when they updated it midway through 2020 for the 2021 model year. So the Kona is an absolute hit. So let's just put that aside for a second. Last summer, I drove an Elantra N-Line. And to put it in a few words, it blew my mind. I, for some reason, did not expect it to be as good as as the performance was incredible the value was nuts the handling the packaging everything about it it, it was brilliant and in fact i shouldn't be so surprised because the vast majority of hyundai's n and n line products are exactly that they're brilliant but something happened with this one now i don't usually read reviews from other journalists i like to be unbiased and, and as fresh as possible when I walk into a new product. But I did have a conversation with a journalist about this maybe six weeks ago and they absolutely loved it. And then I spoke to someone else very recently who had this exact same truck, car, sorry, <laughs> crossover Kona. And uh, they had a slew of issues. And well, that's what I'm dealing with right now. Something got lost in translation. I don't know what happened because this and the Elantra N share a number of components, but the recipe is a little bit different. I'll tell you more in a few instances, in a few moments, I should say. Um, but suffice it to say that this is not living up to my N-line expectations. So in the following video, as per the norm, the walk around, then the drive, so you'll find out more about my thoughts on the Kona N-Line, which should have been brilliant like the others, but isn't. Okay, so just a few words about the facelift. I mean, it's clear the front end has been nip tucked. It's got new headlights, uh, new daytime running lights, and the rear end treatment is also a little bit cleaner, a little bit more profiled, more modern. But either way, I mean, when you look at it, you know that you're looking at a Kona. It's a very uniquely styled vehicle, very much like the Kia Soul and other Hyundai products. Okay, uh, let's just talk about pricing before I keep going. Uh, in the US, base price for a Kona is $21,300. So the end line starts at $25,850. In Canada, $22,099 for the base Kona. The end line is $28,199. I mean, visually, the differences are, well, quite striking and obvious. Uh, well, the color is one. Uh, this is one of the optional single-tone colors, which is actually called Dive in Jeju. I think I said that right. It really works well with this. But, I mean, the dead giveaways are the skirt kits, uh, the wheels, um, obviously, uh, the badging. And one final giveaway as I move my, make my way around the back, the twin tailpipes. I mean, this... it. It looks fantastic. There isn't a bad angle on this thing. I love everything about it. Even the full rear diffuser kind of works. It's a very playful, youthful, energetic little crossover, and I absolutely love it. Now included for the price in the base Kona N-Line, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, very cool sporty woven seats, uh, like I just said, the full body kit, the wheels, eight inch display, heated steering wheel, heated seats, and so on and so forth. Now, the difference in price in Canada and US and would probably make a big difference in the full, the whole driving experience is the fact that in Canada, the Kona N-Line is available only with all wheel drive, whereas in the US, it's an option. So if you tack on the $1,500 option for all wheel drive in the US, it's $27,350. Bottom line is this thing is dirt cheap in Canada compared to the US. Um, what else can I say? Uh, oh, well, there's an optional package, which I'm so happy to report this vehicle doesn't have. Uh, it's the ultimate package, as Hyundai usually uses, which includes uh, sunroof, fog lights, and a whole bunch of other things. Heads-up display. It's an extra $5,600, which you don't need to spend. I mean, I guess we can go around, just do the quick tour. Why not? It's been a while since I drove a Kona. 
obviously no power hatch but who cares 544 liters of trunk space uh, you know some usefulness there it's not huge but this is a small vehicle so that works beautifully now on the topic of not huge i had a golf last week mark 8 golf r and uh, just to give you an idea golf is also a compact car but there was a little bit more room in the rear for the kids compared to this so as a family vehicle with maybe slightly older kids it would work that's just a general comment on the kona itself uh, kona n-line yes okay these are the seats i guess we could just skip right to there they're, they're not as cool or sporty as the ones in the elantra and and this is where i'm going to make a lot of comparisons with the elantra because it set the bar for the n-line line of vehicles in the compact hyundai n-line vehicles wow that was a lot of words to say absolutely nothing but look uh, fit finish is really nice i mean some of the plastics are not you know they're not high grade things but they present very well and that's really all it needs to be um let's just drop in right away i'm going to start it up very clear typical analog gauges which i absolutely love there's your eight inch display with uh, all your typical apple carplay or you know the menus satellite radio and all that it's all there it's very hyundai like so it's easy to navigate through you figure it all out um down here and love buttons i mean i don't know call me old school but i love buttons heated steering wheel boom heated seats boom and they really do heat up now there's your drive mode button i'm going to get back to that but um when you just rotate the switch you toggle between smart normal and sport smart being more or less your default mode again i'll touch on that in a few moments now a few things um no paddles i may touch on that again because the dct that's included with this has well has me worried if you will other things compared to the elantra for example which is only about i think 800 dollars less expensive i forget the exact amount this is manual controls for the hvac which i love which i love um but it's kind of strange manual seats uh, power windows whatever um it, it's it's the packaging that's one of the things that's weird and strange about this vehicle visibility is pretty damn good i mean even when you get over here it's better than the elantra because you're actually sitting up a little bit higher um but that's it okay so enough of that uh, it's time to put it in d and go for a drive okay i'm gonna preface this section of the review by saying that or had i driven the elantra n-line after driving the kona n-line i think my outlook on this vehicle would have been very different okay so a few statistics right both share a turbocharged 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine that produces well in the kona 195 horsepower at 6,000 rpm the elantra produces or gets 201 horsepower torque is identical in both cases 195 pound feet this in here it's from 1600 to 4500 rpm so it's always available i think it comes in a little sooner in the elantra i'm not entirely sure i don't remember the exact details um the they both have a seven speed dual clutch transmission and that is a i i don't know it, it's look i'll just touch on that right now okay um it's been a near catastrophic disaster in this vehicle now in the elantra n-line it was glorious it was quick it was responsive it was it was just there with me at all times whether i'm cruising on a boulevard as i am right now or on some twistier sections of the country road i was driving uh, on last year with it and it had one key differentiator is that it had paddle shifters now for some reason the kona n-line does not have paddle shifters so right away that kind of sucks out some of the sporty-ish aspirations of this vehicle if if to be honest and the fact that yeah sure there's a manual mode with the shifter here but i don't know why automakers don't get it but it's forward is downshift and backward is upshift most manufacturers except for mazda and maybe one or two other automakers they get that well hyundai is doing it backwards the thing with the dct though is that it's been doing some weird stuff 
mixed in with the throttle response, and that is whether you're in smart or normal. Mild throttle uh, application means that the, the transmission can figure it out, it works out. But if you're in smart and suddenly you want to accelerate to say because you're merging or something like that, then something happens between the, the throttle position control sensors thinking and the, and the transmission's brain because they just completely disagree on at least two occasions. Engine speeds were increasing as I was trying to accelerate, but the, the transmission was just slipping. Nothing was happening. It, it was kind of spooky and I'm concerned about the clutches. I have to be absolutely honest. And on occasion as well, uh, when RPMs drop, depending on loads and requirements and the situation, and you lift off the brake because you want to start coasting or creeping forward, something really weird happens too, whereas everything starts to shake. Not cool at all. I'm very concerned for the durability, longevity of this vehicle. So back to the throttle response in Smart, it's you have to be ultimately it's at super eco mode normal kind of increases throttle response to a point where it feels normal and sport does help almost completely negate that but uh, uh i don't know i i don't recall having such issues in smart mode it is usually one of my preferred normal driving modes the smart one as it's usually tuned properly, but in this thing, it's completely ass sideways. Now, so the DCT is somehow, somehow really wrong in this, and it was brilliant in the Elantra N. The power is decent. It's, it's actually quite good. I really can't complain. It's fairly quick, off the line, maybe not as much as it should be, even in sport. But that may have something to do with the fact that, well, all-wheel drive is standard with the Kona N line. In Canada as opposed to the US so that does add 300 pounds give or take to the Kona and the Kona's overall weight so maybe that does hamper performance but the bottom line is that it's still fairly quick so so far the Elantra N line look the same with the steering I and mean, the steering has a little bit of on center play which was non-existent in the Elantra in fact I stated that it was some of the best steering I've ever experienced in a Hyundai slash Kia product in my career. Now see, I'm in normal and then it took so long to downshift. Yes, I know it's there. I'm trying to get away from it. Um, so where was I? Oh yeah. There's one thing I wasn't entirely crazy about with the Elantra N-Line and that was the ride quality. It was a little bit stiffer but the the upside was incredibly dynamic very good uh, chassis control weight manipulation it, it, it just felt really good on the road now a, a cool thing about the Kona line is that it, as far as I can tell it has the same suspension setup as a regular 1.6 turbo all-wheel drive Kona which means the ride is actually quite comfortable it's not harsh by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, it's more comfortable and more supple than the Elantra, so I love it for that. It's a multi-link setup with the all-wheel drive and a McPherson in the, in the front, so it's fully independent. Um, and the brakes feel just fine. I mean, they feel adequate for the application and the intended use of this vehicle. Which, which leads me to believe that it would actually be a lot of fun to track this thing because in sport mode, I'm assuming that the DCT will be a little bit more up to being pushed around and far more responsive. And because the suspension actually has some travel and some give, it would be great on your average track. The brakes might be where you know the weakness would be, uh, but this isn't the full fat Kona N, which I'm sure will be a complete blast and a, and, and a beautiful thing to experience. So I don't want to hate on this other than mention that everything that is done to this vehicle with regards to the DCT is off or lacking or not quite ready. The first thing is just give it paddles. 
I can't imagine that costs a lot more money and the manual mode is already you know tuned into the transmission electronically I mean and maybe revise the throttle response or give it an eco mode and revise smart I don't know and the shuttering and the slipping so it's all really DCT related because otherwise I mean the Kona continues to be extremely popular and the end lines looks should be enough to sell it the performance is kind of a the overall performance which is a little bit more of this a little bit more of that is just an added bonus this is great but Hyundai has to do something about the transmission